Welcome to Lights and Perfection for another moment in the Word. My name's Chris, and today, although I should have done this video probably at the start of the YouTube channel, I want to discuss the purpose and the meaning of Lights and Perfection. As you know, we are a Christian Bible teaching ministry, and our mission statement is bringing the truth about biblical perfection and holiness to light through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, the purpose of Lights and Perfection, I just want to go right to a scripture really quick, because Lights and per Perfection, according to the scriptures in the Old Testament that were originally written in Hebrew, the word light means Urim, and the word perfection means Tumim. Now, these are kind of obscure passages throughout the scripture, but they point to the meaning of Lights and Perfection. We could have named it Urim and Tumim, but nobody would probably know what we're talking about, so... I'm glad we chose lights and perfection, and we get to teach this biblical truth about perfection and holiness. So join me in Exodus 28, verse 30, and I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. I do jump around from a lot of translations, but I do have my trusty ESV right here on hand, so I'm just going to go ahead and start there. Exodus again, 28, and verse 30, reads this, And in the breastpiece of judgment... You shall put the Urim and the Tumim, and they shall be on Aaron's heart. When he goes in before the Lord, thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel on his heart before the Lord regularly. Now, the New Living Translation says that basically Aaron's going to go in before the Lord and discern the will of the Lord for the people. And in this context, the word judgment is almost likened to what King Solomon prayed for, that he would have you know, wisdom and understanding so that he could rightly judge God's people. And Solomon had wisdom that was unparalleled with anybody on the face of the earth at that time, so much so that people like the Queen of Sheba actually sought him from a distance and, and went all the way to meet him just to, to, to peer at the wisdom of God. And, and she became a believer in God, so to speak, in that time, where she truly understood that there was a God in heaven after meeting God's servant Solomon. Now, the purpose of lights and perfection is, first of all, it wasn't created by us. It wasn't something we were even looking to do. Now, I'm a Christian. I was born again in 2011, and shortly after that, God called me to be a shepherd of his sheep, so it was no mystery to me that I was going to be a shepherd. I just didn't know what that was going to look like. Honestly, I thought it was going to look like sometime God's going to open the door and I'm going to be able to go be a pastor behind a pulpit, minister to his people. But it didn't seem to be working out in that direction. Now, didn't mean I wasn't ministering to God's people. Is is It's a daily routine for me. It doesn't matter where I am, what I'm doing. I just want to be led by his spirit. And that's the point of this, this ministry. It's about being led by the spirit. And I'm going to show in a moment how that ties into the Urim and Tumim, or in other words, lights and perfection. Now again, this ministry was not called by us. It was called by the will of God. And again, we weren't really looking for it. As a matter of fact, it was a strange occurrence that led up to the point of even starting a ministry. I actually have voiced my, my beliefs often in my workplace, in my home life, in my friendships. I, it doesn't matter where I am, I voice my beliefs. And one day, my boss came to me and said, you need to open up a nonprofit. And I thought to myself, there is no way I'm opening a nonprofit. I don't, I don't know the first thing about doing this. And he, he offered to help set it up. No strings attached. He just wanted to help me fulfill my beliefs, I guess. And so I discerned through that that maybe God was trying to do something. But again, as coming out of nothing into something, God says, hey, I want you to start a nonprofit. It's kind of like Abraham he calls Abraham and says, you know what, I want you to get out of your get out of your homeland and go to some place you don't know. And oftentimes, this, this in my experience, and I'm sure you can relate to this, that when God calls you into something, he doesn't necessarily give you all the plans and the details. It's something that you have to grow and you trust in him. And it, in hindsight, looking back at it, I guess if the name of our ministry is Lights and Perfection, and again, I'll get into that in a little bit, then it makes sense that each step by step, we trust in God and he reveals his plan. Now, again, this was what initiated this ministry, but at the time, I didn't know what to call this ministry. I didn't, wasn't thinking of a name, and it was through a lot of prayer and, and supplication and reading of God's word that the, the, 
terms Urim and Tumim really kept jumping out at me and, and digging into what that meant. And, and I just want to read a couple of scriptures really quick and, and then we'll, we'll get into it. And I'm sure just by reading the scriptures, you'll get a, a keener understanding of what Urim and Tumim really is. Here we have in Nehemiah 7.65, says, the governor told them that they were not to partake of the most holy food until a priest with Urim and Tumim should arise. The next one was in Ezra. Again, the same, same passage of scripture. Those two were around the same time. The governor told them that they were not to partake of the most holy food until there should be a priest to consult Urim and Tumim. That was Ezra 2.63, identical scriptures. Now, moving forward, we have a negative situation with King Saul. We know that King Saul was the first king to arise in Israel, anointed by God, but he kept disobeying God. And there was a scripture that said, does God delight in sacrifice? It's, it's rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, but to hearken unto the voice of the Lord is what God is really after. It's to be obedient, to obey is better than sacrifice is what God says in his word. Now, 1 Samuel 28 and 26 says this, And when Samuel inquired of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him either by dreams or by Urim or by prophets. So this is really interesting and reveals a little bit more about the Urim and Tumim. In this case, the Urim was lights. It says that even though King Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord stopped listening to him and would not give him dreams would not reveal himself through Urim or prophets. So it's interesting to see that the Urim was actually placed in direct connection with dreams and prophets. Now, a prophet in the Old Testament times was the spokesperson for God. When people needed to hear from God, they sought a prophet of the land. And the prophet of the land was able to direct the people in the judgments of God. We talked about Samuel the prophet in another video, and in, in this playlist, another moment in the word, or rather moment in the word, you'll see it's Samuel the prophet. It's hearing the voice of God. You can check out that video if you want. It speaks a little bit about his, his role and his prominence and what he did. I mean, he was called by God even as a young child, and he began to hear the voice of God. And the first, the first word that God gave him was about Eli the priest. Now, priests in the Bible are supposed to be those that understand and discern God's will and are able to articulate that for the people. Thus, we talked about in the beginning, Exodus 28 and 30, which the Urim and the Tumim, rather the lights and perfection, were placed inside the breastpiece so that when Aaron put it over onto him, the ephod, and the breastpiece of judgment, he would have the Urim and the Tumim so that when he went in before the Lord, he would be able to bear the judgment for the people of Israel. And the term bear the judgment means to discern the will of God on behalf of the people. So a prophet and a priest was supposed to be somebody skilled in the word of righteousness, somebody that could understand and interpret what God was saying to his people. Therefore, people like prophets, like Samuel the prophet in this instance, he was able to discern what God was saying and hear what he's saying, and therefore he was sent forth to Israel to be a blessing and a spokesperson on behalf of God. He anointed King Saul and he anointed King David. He understood the times and the seasons. He understood when it was a time for the authority to change into another hand. He, he understood things, the deep things of God, and was able to guide and lead the people because he could hear from God. And this is a beautiful illustration here with King Saul. After the anointing was taken from him, he tried to seek God. He tried to seek for an answer, and it just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't pan out for him. And so what's really amazing is that God, again, would not reveal himself by the, by the dreams, by the Urim, or the prophets. So these, th these three things are kind of lumped into the same category. And again, now, moving forward, there was another situation in the book of Acts, and uh, it's in Acts 1, 23 through 26. It says, And they put forward two, Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, You, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to take place in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. 
So Judas Iscariot falls out of the picture. He turns his back on Christ. He ends up hanging himself in the end. And so since Jesus chose 12 apostles, they needed to replace that apostle. And so they chose to do this by casting lots. This is really interesting in that passage of scripture because it's kind of like the Urim and Tumim. They, they sought counsel from God and asked God to make the decision. In the Old Testament, there were very few people that could really hear and discern the voice of God. And now I'm getting to the really exciting part here and the need and the purpose for lights and perfection. So, Lights and Perfection, as I stated, was not initiated by us. It wasn't something I was thinking about and saying, you know, well, this is what God wants me to do. He revealed it step by step by the Urim and Tumim, so to speak, by the Lights and Perfection, he revealed his will. And so, we believe in this time and generation that we're living in, and this is something God has been preparing me for, I believe, for some years now, is the need to come back to the ability to hear God. Now, Jesus came and made a statement. And this statement is really powerful. He said that my sheep hear my voice. And again, I talked about that in the video about Samuel the prophet and hearing the voice of God, but we're gonna get into a little bit more detail here. Now, what does this have to do with us in being priests? Now, the idea of being able to hear God's voice and a discerning voice, that is, to be able to discern the will of God, Notice how we talked about the priesthood, the prophets. These people were those that could hear the voice of God. Now, in the New Covenant, Jesus made this statement in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, and this is the New Living Translation. It says, For you are a chosen people, you are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Praise God. And that scripture from John 10 was actually John 10, 4. And here I have it in the New Living Translation that says, After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. Now, how can we know the voice of God? And is it the same as in the Old Testament or different? Well, I'd have to say different. Because very few people had the ability to have the Holy Spirit the way we do today. And I liken the Urim and Tumim to today's work of the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant. Because through the Holy Spirit, we can hear Jesus' voice. We can see where he's going. We can have dreams and visions and interpretations because this is what the prophet Joel said. And I'm going to get there really quick too while we're in it. Let me just flip over to Acts 2. Acts verse 2, starting at verse 16, and then we'll go to 18. And this is in the English Standard Version, my, my go-to. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Praise the Lord. So here we have, I talked about the Old Testament priesthood, the prophets being able to hear and discern the voice of God, and likening that to the New Covenant where we are all a chosen generation. We are all the priesthood of God. So before it was only a select few, now it's all those that call on the name of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When we call upon him, we have the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Spirit. And he is here as our helper, or our paraclete, one who comes alongside to guide us and lead us in the ways of God correctly and accurately. Jesus in other instances mentioned that he's going to tell us things to come. And this would be, um, would coincide rather with the rest of the book of Acts. You see, Peter had a vision. Peter was visited by angels in prison and delivered. People had prophecies about famines in the land, amazing things were happening. And so the purpose and the need for lights and perfection today, as we're connecting all these dots from the Urim and Tumim to today's Holy Spirit, is the need to come back to the grassroots of Christianity and understanding it as we see it in God's holy word. Not through some mystical experience 
although we are going to have radical experiences in Christ if we truly seek the things of his word. I can't imagine the prophet Samuel being able to hear God's voice um, and, and thinking that that was some sort of overtly conservative reality of, well, it was just God's written word and, and we read it, we, we interpreted it with our human thinking. No, in, in, in such ways, the Holy Spirit's wisdom and the wisdom of God is not like earthly wisdom. God's methods are not necessarily conservative, nor are they necessarily conventional. And that's the amazing nature of our God. When I was coming into Christianity and I got saved, I was a, an atheist rebelling against God and didn't want anything to do with him. I was involved in drugs and, and chaos and, and just all sorts of foolishness. And, and there's another video that'll detail that a little bit more as well. I don't want to take up too much time in that. That one is under the playlist Real Gospel for Real People, and it is my testimony. And so moving forward here, we have the ability to hear God's voice through the Holy Spirit. And in my early walk, that was one of the first things that started getting ingrained within me. Now, the first six months of my walk, I didn't really have the fullness of the Spirit, but I was still able to discern God's voice to a degree. And God was leading me up to that point, and it's something you grow in. As you see the prophet Samuel again, I like going back to him because three times the Lord called his name and he didn't know it was the Lord. It took Eli to say, hey, maybe it's the Lord. This is what you should do the next time you hear your name called. And at that point, the word of the Lord was revealed to Samuel, and at that point, Samuel knew the Lord. And so it is with us. There has to be this intimate relationship with God to where we have not just offering up prayers that hit the ceiling, but where we can hear back from God on certain issues. And it's not like we have this pick up the telephone, hey God, what should I do about this? And immediately he gives us an answer audibly. It's nothing like that. It's, it's so much more, it's just better. It's just better than what we could ever imagine. And, and lights and perfection, the need and the purpose for this is to encourage people in that that part and that aspect of Christianity, because although there's a lot of people walking in it, we believe by and large that there are a lot that are just walking after their own desires today. And why not? If Paul said the days are coming where they're perilous times, where people will be lovers of self, proud, boasters, arrogant, not lovers of God. We can go to church and do all the right things and actually still be living by our own desires. The truth is, is that we want to hear and discern the voice of God and be able to walk accurately in his will. And we believe as that second part of lights and perfection we have on our logo says, go and make disciples. We believe the most accurate way to make disciples for our ministry, rather, the model that we're going to choose is to teach people and equip people that this is indeed possible. And we can do that by sharing real life testimony in our lives about how God has responded to us. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can always reach out to us in the comments below, or you can just hit our website, lightsimperfection.com. There should be a link to that in, the, in, in our channel somewhere, and you can just reach out to us through the contact page, submit a message, whatever, whatever you need to do if you want more resources on this. Now, moving forward, if we know his voice, we will ultimately discern his voice and follow him. Thus, we come to the purpose and the existence for what we're doing here. It's so simple. Jesus made disciples, and when he called them, he said, follow me. He didn't give them this huge religious litany of this is what you need to know before you get into it. He taught them along the way. And as or the second part of our logo says, go and make disciples, the Great Commission in the International Standard Version of the Bible says, therefore, as you go, make disciples. And so we just want to make disciples life on life, real on real, wherever we go. We want to spread this message of the gospel, of the good news of Jesus Christ, of the hope that we have in him, the resurrection that we have awaiting for us, and the power we have afforded to us right now, this very hour, to be able to be a witness for him. Now, talking about, again, the, the disciples casting lots, you realize that they cast lots before the Holy Spirit came upon them. They didn't need to cast lots after the Holy Spirit came upon them because they just knew what they were called to do they had the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they could hear God's voice, and they knew what and when they should do. And it's amazing that this same thing that we read about in the scriptures is afforded to all of us. And that's the only purpose that we want to, to really get across right now is that that's what it's all about. It's about, it's about 
salvation, yes, getting people saved and, and, and getting them born again, but our ministry is, although that is really important to us, our, the main part of our ministry is to encourage the existing body of Christ in these things that we're talking about right now. Now, moving a little bit further, I want to talk about another scripture really quick, just to kind of connect the dots a little bit. And it's in Numbers 27, verses 21. And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest, who shall inquire for him by the judgment of the Urim before the Lord. At his word they shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, both he and all the people of Israel with him, the whole congregation. Now, I'm not saying that you guys have to just listen to us and, and we're the only way, we're the only ones preaching the truth because there's a lot of amazing people of God out there that understand these same concepts and are walking in this truth. But what this illustrates right here is the need for Urim and Tumim. Not necessarily the need for lights and perfection as it is in this ministry. We don't ever want to exalt ourselves as, as being anything more than just servants of God. That's all we are. And we're servants of God for you. And we want to just bring these, these messages. We want to bring this word to you. And we hope it encourages you. If you, again, want to know anything else, reach out to us. And if you like what you've heard, like it, subscribe to it, and just feed us some comments. We want to know how the word of God, again, is impacting your life. We want to know how your life is being transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you in Jesus' name.